What is going on guys and welcome to the channel. My name is Philly B2 and in this video we're going to be discussing the ultimate EV training guide in Pokemon Sword and Shield. This is going to range from beginners all the way to the expert end game kind of people and if you, even if you're in end game maybe you're going to be able to find something in this video that's going to help you EV train. So I'll be breaking down the video in timestamps so click where you need to click depending on your level of EV training and without further ado let's get right into this video. So the first question we want to ask ourselves are, what are EVs? To understand EVs, we have to look at Pokemon stats. Now, as you know, Pokemon have six stats. They have stats in HP, attack, defense, special attack, special defense, and speed. Now, what are EVs? EVs are essentially known as effort points. And what you're going to do with EVs are basically gain four EVs and boost up a specific stat more than it normally is. So four EVs equal to one Pokemon stat. Uh, a total amount of EVs that you can have in one stat is 252 EVs, okay? And a total of 508 with all the EVs combined. So you get 252, 252 in one stat, another 252 in another stat, and then you get four EVs in another stat. So in that number together, equals 508 total EVs. So as you go throughout this video and we explain the things in the various sections, be aware that 508 is the total amount of EVs that you can have on a Pokemon and 252 is the max amount of EVs you can have in a particular Pokemon stat. The first part of this video is early game EV training. So you just started the game and you have access to none of these items. Well, you can start EV training immediately because there are some Pokemon that you're going to encounter in the beginning of the game that help you get your EV points. For example, when you encounter a Skovet, you will be getting one point in HP. If you encounter a Choodle, you'll be getting one point in attack. If you encounter a Wooloo, you will be getting one point in defense. If you encounter a Nicket, you'll be getting one point in special defense. If you encounter a Rookadee, you will get one EV point in speed. And when you encounter Ghastly in the wild area, specifically at the Watch Tower, you'll be getting one point in special attack. So in theory, as a beginning EV trainer, depending on which stat you want to max out, you're going to have to knock out 252 of that particular Pokemon to max out that stat. There's also an option of farming feathers in the game. Now, you can go take a flying taxi to Motostoke. You want to head over there. And once you get to Motostoke, you want to go up, take that little thing up. And then we go, we take the bridge. Okay, so we go up in Motostoke from there. All right. And what you're going to do is when you go across the bridge, you're going to see a lot of these sparkling, sparkling items. And you're going to see muscle feather. We're going to keep going across. We see more stuff. Genius feather. Pretty feather. Like, you know, it's just, it's just a good amount of stuff you'll see. So basically, let me explain to you what the exact feathers are. So, so you have the health feather, which helps you out in HP. You have the muscle feather, which gives you attack. You have the resist feather, which gives you defense. You have the genius feather, which gives you special attack. You have the clever feather, which gives you special defense. And the swift feather that gives you speed. But essentially, all these items, if you collect lots of them and choose to do so, will just give you one EV. Now, it's a cheap way of doing it, but it's a way of adding on EVs to your Pokemon training. Now, this is something really interesting for you guys to know. Now, Pokerus is a virus that Pokemon end up getting that helps boost their EV training even more. If you would like to see how to get Pokerus, go ahead and check out this video over here. So going back to the previous examples of Pokemon we just referred to, let's take Wooloo, for example. Now, we mentioned that Wooloo is going to give you one EV point in defense. If your Pokemon has the Pokerus and you take out a Wooloo, you now earn double the amount of points, which means now when you take out a Wooloo, it is two points, which means you now don't have to KO 252 Wooloo, but half of that number. This means that you only have to then KO 126 Wooloo in order to get a max EV stat. Now, this is for players who are 
more end game and would like to EV train their Pokemon up quick. So what you're going to do is you're going to head over all the way to Winden, right? That's right over here. Uh, this is towards the end of the game. So you want to go to Winden. And when we arrive in Winden, we enter the Pokemon Center right over here. And what you're going to do is you're going to go talk to the second guy on the right. And he's going to say, welcome champion, here to do a spot of shopping. And you say, I'm here to buy. And you're going to notice a few items on here. You're going to see the HP up, which is going to raise HP base points of a single Pokemon. You're going to see protein, which raises attack. You're going to see iron, which raises defense. You're going to see calcium, which raises the special attack. You're going to see zinc, which raises the special defense. And you're going to see carbos, which raises the speed stat of a Pokemon. Now, each of these items raise an EV or your EV points by 10. 10 points. So what did we say before? We said that a total per one stat is about 252 EVs, which essentially means you have to buy 26 of these items in order to fulfill one complete stat. So let's just say that I wanted to maximize a Pokemon's base stats completely in special defense and speed. So I would have to buy 26 Carbos and I would have to buy 26 special defense, which would equate you a price of 260,000 per item. And then we have one more base stat left over. So four more EVs remain after that. So we would have to buy one more of these that would we, we would pick. So let's pick HP. So totally the amount that you would be spending would be $260,000 for one stat, another 260,000 Poke Dollars for another stat, and $10,000 Poke Dollars for another stat, bringing you to a total of about 530,000 Poke Dollars to maximize and EV train one Pokemon completely. I'm going to be showing you guys an example of how to EV train right now. I have a six IV Pokemon that I haven't even touched yet. So we're going to go get him. So here we go. I'm going to grab the Dreadnought first. I'm going to see its uh, stats. There it is, guys. Six IV. I just want to show that off. And the next thing I'm going to do is, okay, what do I want to EV train Dreadnought in? Now, I'm not telling you how to build Pokemon. I'm just giving you guys merely an example of what to do. So in the case of Dreadnought, I want to train its attack. So I'm going to look for the item that helps me raise the attack. What am I going to do? I'm going to buy 26 of this item. So I get 26 proteins. Uh, the next thing that I want to do for Dreadnought is I want to raise its HP. So I'm going to grab 26 of the HP ups to maximize its HP EV stats. And the last one that I'm going to do is just one of another item. And I'm just going to pick maybe defense or special defense. I don't know. In this case, I'll go with special defense. So I'll grab one special defense. And just like that, I am now officially only have 125 Poke Dollars and I'm ready to EV train it. So I'm going to go into my bag now so i'm going to use this item on dreadmaw and i'm going to put all 26 and all dreadnaw's attack points go in right and if you try to add any extra the game will say it's not going to happen because you can't put that many stats because you can only put 252 and one right i'm going to add the hp up now and we're going to put all the hp stats and you're going to watch his hp points actually raise here okay there you go it raised up and then we finally have zinc which is special defense i'm going to add that and now my dreadnaw is a little more powerful than it originally was so just like that my dreadnaw now is fully ev trained i can now battle in the wild with other pokemon and not worry about other ev points coming onto him let's talk about power items now each of the power items relate to a specific stat of the pokemon as you can see it says it in the description below power bracer being attack power belt being defense power lens being special attack power band being special defense power anklet being speed and power weight being hp let's talk about wulu for this example wulu is going to again yield you one ev per kill which means normally you're going to have to kill 252 Wulu. Power items give you four EVs of that particular stat that the power item does. If I'm talking about a power belt, I'm going to be getting four EVs of defense along with that one EV of Wulu which totally makes each Wulu knockout five EVs in worth, which means with a power belt, okay, and a knockout of the Wulu, you're going to be doing about 51 knockouts, which is better than the Macho Brace. Now, with the Pokerus and the power item combined for that specific stat, you're going to only have to knock out 36 Wulu. That is it. 36 Wulu and you max out a stat and you're not really spending any money at all to max out that stat. So think about it like that. Now, let's say, for example, you're still knocking out Wulu 
Wulu, but you want to use a different power item. For example, I'm knocking out Wulu, but I decide to use the power bracer. Well, each Wulu is going to give me, again, one point in defense each in its EVs, and the power bracer will be giving me four EVs in attack with each knockout. So basically, I'm getting four attack EVs and one Wulu defense EV if I'm using a different item. So most likely, the, the most efficient way would be using the same power item that you would like to train with the same type of Pokemon that yields the exact same EV. So likewise, pick the appropriate power item that you want to use. It only costs 10 BP and apply that to your Pokemon. And please note, the Pokemon that we used in these examples are all one EV in this video. You can find different Pokemon with higher EVs as in two or three down in the description below. I will mention a link where you can find all the different types of EVs so you can hunt better ones. Okay, so this next part is about EV reducing, which means it could be two things. You're either one of those trainers who have a really good Pokemon and just decided to battle all these random Pokemon and its EVs are all over the place. And now you're like, okay, I need to reset completely. Well, this part's going to help you as well. And if you're one of those trainers who also are maybe late game and you're like, I want to try a different build on this Pokemon and change its EVs around and, and play around with its nature. Well, you can do that in this guide as well. So what you're going to do is you're going to need EV reducing berries. Now, these berries can be found in trees throughout the whole entire Galar region. You just shake the trees, they drop berries, and you pick them up. So what are these berries? Well, let's take a look. There are six important berries that you need to know about in Pokemon Sword and Shield. We have the Pomeg Berry, which is responsible for HP. We have the Kelpsy Berry, which is responsible towards attack. The Qualit Berry, which is important for defense. The Hondu Berry, which deals with special attack. The Greppa Berry, which deals with special defense. And the Tomato Berry, which deals with speed. Now, this is important to know. If you have over a 100 base stats in a specific stat. Let's just say I have 200 base stats and speed. The first berry that you give to that Pokemon will reduce it by 100 and every berry after that will reduce it by 10. Does that make sense? So for example, if I had 200 EVs and something and I use my first berry, it's going to knock it down to 100 and then I just have to use 10 more berries because the following berries will just reduce it by 10. To reduce an EV stat completely from maximum amount, you're going to need to use 11 berries. Please note that you do get EV reducing berries from berry trees that you find throughout the Galar region. So go ahead and just find those, shake those, and start collecting these in case you need to reduce EVs on Pokemon you like that you may have messed up with. So to summarize, the best time to EV train would most likely be post game, not early game, because you can correct your early game mistakes. But if you're that type of person, go ahead. I'm not going to stop you from it. If you're a late gamer or post gamer, the best options are the money method where you have to spend 560,000 Pokemon money to get what you need to fully EV train. Or you could do the simple power item with the Pokemon that is Pokerus while going after the exact same Pokemon that you need, which would be 36 kills or less in order to get the Pokemon stat of your desire. And if you make any mistakes, just use the berries. That's pretty much sums it up for the whole entire EV guide. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I tried my best to make this as simple as possible for you guys to understand while using one EV example Pokemon. And I wanted you guys to understand it while also being able to skip around and go to where you need to in the video. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment. Let me know what Pokemon you're EV training. Subscribe. Hit that subscribe button somewhere. I don't know where it is. And join the Discord server where we have lots of fun about Pokemon stuff and we're going to be maybe trading EV Pokemon training tips and get more information there. So that's going to be in the link down in the description below as well. So I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Philly Beats You. Thanks for watching. I'm out.